Thank you, everyone, for joining us for another episode of the Ono oh Disc Golf Podcast. With me, as always, is my best friend, Kyle. Hi, guys. And very special guest, the winner of the 2022 MVP Open and Deglo, Natalie Ryan. Natalie, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Uh, why don't we just kick it off and you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so, started off, I am the, the best trans athlete in the sport of disc golf. Um, I... I have disc golf is by no means the first sport I've ever played. I've kind of been playing sports since I've been six or seven, um, uh, hopped around a bunch of different things, kind of moved up, found this through, through my partner. And, you know, that was that, um, a few other things. I, I play a lot of video games. Um, that's not very common from what I understand on the tour for the ladies. So yeah, that's, that's about it. What's your favorite game right now? Favorite game right now? I mean, I mean, it's it's hard for me not to say Minecraft because oh, okay. like I could just play it f- for days all at the same time. I mean, there's so many different ways you can play it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I've I've so been going through things. another another play every every like six months or so. I'll I'll kind of just Switch deep dive into it for yeah for like oh, okay. a week or two. And, yeah, gotcha. I'm through. I'm going through one of those right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I'm more if I want to be in that headspace, I go for more like a roller to go roller coaster tycoon type of feel. I'll mm-hmm. go go into one of those for my sandbox. Nice. What about you, Eric? No, nah, I pretty much just play Borderlands and that's it. <laughs> Shooters. <laughs> Mostly just a shooter guy. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, I take the, so, I like the sandbox in the way of like creating a character over creating a world. I guess it's it's not really a sandbox, but that's like the creative way I like to go. Sorry, nothing about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you kind of talked a little bit about it, but how and when did this golf come into your life? Um, so it came into my life when I sort of met my my now fiance. Um, our second date was at a disc golf course. He was kind of new at the time. He'd been playing for, you know, a couple of years and just starting to get into the tournament scene and, and stuff like that. But he took me out to a course. We, you know, had a blast. I got to watch someone throw a, a disc really far and it looked really cool. And I was, you know, told myself I wanted to go home and learn how to do that. And, you know, now the rest is kind of history at that point. And how long ago was that? Sorry, just like off the top of your head. Um, it's a about five years maybe a little bit more okay. that's cool i just like to figure that out so that's awesome quite a long time on tour then you are or, or like uh not like on tour but like you know in, in your process of figuring out disc golf did you play any other sports before uh getting really into disc golf um so right about when i had joined disc golf meeting my fiance um i was very very heavy into parkour if you've ever heard of that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. So I, I, I'd done that for most of my college years. I think, uh, it was like four or five years straight doing that. Um, wow. so when, I mean, even when I won my first tournament in, uh, FA one, uh, I, I did a flip okay. <laughs> just oh, in celebration. Awesome. So yeah, yeah. I still kind of had some of the skills after, after learning this golf. So that's awesome. That must be where you got the footwork. You know, I always try and figure yes. out for cross training. Um, most people, it's you know, baseball or uh, uh tennis. tennis. Now, I found out fencing, Nova, hmm. um, and now free running, or uh, yeah, that, that that's that's awesome. I didn't even think about that as a potential cross train. Yeah, I mean, oh. it teaches you a lot more than, than just the footwork part of things, too. Like, yeah. so much strength, parkour is. It's it's one of those sports where like if you don't know how to use your entire body to to do a thing, it's going to teach you how to do that. And mm-hmm. that 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 sort of mentality kind of transfers really well into pretty much any other sport. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. So, how many people when you tell them that you've park you were used to parkour, do they hit you with the office line from about parkour? Uh, uh, parkour. <laughs> too many too many because yeah, I, I, I wanted to and then i was like no i gotta bite my tongue because i'm right, sure right. a million times uh, 
That's pretty uh, good. Uh, right. So about how long did it take in disc golf before you realized you wanted to do this more than just, you know, something you do on the weekends or as just more than just a hobby? Um, it wasn't uh, a crazy long time. Um, the first like year ish, I was, I was very much just, I'm going to, I'm going to do field work. I'm going to learn how to throw like my, my, my fiance at the time did. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to throw far and, and we'll, we'll see just cause it looks cool. And I want to, I want to do that. And after I kind of learned how to do that, um, a couple of his friends and, and even him himself were, were basically saying like, look, you throw really far now, like you're, you're, you're getting quite good. Like, you, you know, you could, you could do something with this. And I, it kind of dawned on me that like, yeah, maybe, maybe I try to push this as far as it can go. And, and the rest of it just kind of happened. <laughs> Did you have any, um, like, uh, what, did you go to school? I'm sorry. I, I I should know this. This is just like a little background thing. But like, did you go to college? Uh, so I I went to college until I suddenly needed to transition, and then oh, it was true. very very difficult to continue going to school and focus on that at the same time. Absolutely. So I ended up ended up dropping out and uh, and kind of getting my life in order off the back of that. That's cool. I'm gonna drop out too. So. You're totally good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I feel like so Every now and then I still kind of wish I, I could go back, but it, Got yeah, you. it's what it is. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> we can all dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, let's um, see. Oh, next one, we get into it. All right, sick. I'm so excited to actually have you on. I just wanted to, first off, thank you for coming on. Um, Just responding yeah. to my message was like uh really fucking awesome i i was expecting no one to answer to be honest i uh went in with really low expectations but um the amount of response that we've gotten has been awesome so uh just want to say thank you first off um why do you think people hide behind the lie that trans people are like uh, monsters and they need to be protected uh, from them. Like why, why, why do you think people hide behind that so much? I, I don't understand the logic behind it, but uh, if you could comment on it, maybe. Um, I mean, I don't really understand the logic behind it either. Um, a lot of it is just, they, they've, they don't know any trans people. They've, they've never met anybody. So they don't, they don't have anyone they can actually kind of relate to when it comes down to that. Um, sure. But it's just generalized fear because they've heard that from someone else. So they just carry that forward without actually realizing that that's true or not. So they, they kind of just, I don't know, it, it's just a, a per perpetual cycle of, of just, I guess, inherited hatred from the person that they learned it from. And dismantling that and, and kind of piecing back together your, your own ideas and thoughts afterwards is is not something most people ever really do yeah for sure um it's uh it's a pretty small part of the population overall so i feel like not everybody has within their friend group or like even have met a trans person so um i feel like like well one proud so proud for you being like the most uh prolific uh uh disc golfer uh trans player so like it's amazing that we have the opportunity to chat with you um and to just kind of show people that you're just a person just like everybody else um right yeah and i feel like people lose that uh during these art or uh like if, if people have differing opinions on it it's it's it, that's what it comes down to <laughs> yeah yeah they're they're more worried about like i i guess things that they would do if they were trans or something like that than they are of actual trans people right like they they jump to conclusions because they can't really they can't really empathize with trans people like there's you, cis people simply don't feel the same way and then they never really will so it's almost impossible for them to really understand exactly why the, the like we transition at all 
So I think that's a big reason why a lot of people kind of struggle to empathize. I guess, yeah, just in general. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is tough. Um, and it's tough, I guess, to combat that too. But uh, by being out in the world of uh, disc golf and um, just uh, doing this type of thing too um, goes to show everybody that again you're just a person and people are people it's it's just fucking ridiculous to discriminate against a person in my opinion uh, right so right uh, i mean i'm right there with you like it, yeah. it doesn't really make any sense to me either I, I just i don't know it's it's hard to fight against it too because being being vocal and also being hated at the same time are they don't really work hand in hand it's it's hard to kind of combat that other than simply just being visible which is all i've really been able to do at this point yeah and hey great job so far i, th I think you're doing an amazing <laughs> job um how do you think um did you see the policy change coming at all or was it more oh, of yeah. a blind okay you know, I, I, I kind of knew it was coming yeah i mean any time a trans woman is successful in any sort of sport, a any of them, um, the organization either realizes that they can ban them and does so, or they realize that they can ban them and then um, are threatened with legal action and hold back. Um, so, I mean, this sport did the same exact thing. Um, it, I was successful. Suddenly that wasn't okay with a lot of people. And now I'm not allowed to play on tour. Very true, and well put. Um, it's it, it's uh, it's so easy to be inclusive and uh, whatever when it's like no one is paying attention. But um, no, as soon right. as you win, no, you know you can't you can't do that. Yeah, no, you can't win. They didn't. So they yeah. were expecting you to win, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not allowed to succeed. That is that is the core belief that a lot of a lot of people have. It's like, oh well, you're you're here, but you can't you can't be successful. You're not really a woman, is essentially what they're saying. With or like that, you're a with that sort of thing. woman, where you're yeah, like, you can exactly. be a woman in some events, but not not these events. Right, right. I mean, that's the whole. That's what the policy looks like to me on paper, which is mm -hmm. just gross. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of parallels to like racial discrimination, uh, yep. discrimination against uh, uh, the gay community or any any of the. Uh, uh, I, I I always get the acronym wrong. Uh, <laughs> I always forget a letter or two uh, of the LGBT. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't I can't say it. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, Anyway, um, appreciate that uh, you are um, not just letting them do this to you, uh, too. Uh, right. Thank you that's, for fighting back. That's the whole point. Yeah. I <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Like it's, it was a tough choice to do that. Absolutely. Uh, I when I saw this coming right before I kind of went to the summit um, in the fall last year. Um, I was telling myself in those moments that like, if, if they ban me, I'm probably going to walk away and just be done with this. And I mean, there was a, a good friend of mine that helped change my, change my opinion on that. And he kind of told me that giving up's worse than losing. And I mean, he's, he's right. I would rather, I would rather lose in court than walk away entirely. So I'm going to do everything in my power to make them be as big of jerks as they can be so that someone out there realizes that they've done this to hurt me rather than for anything in, of, of any merit it seems like it's it the policy change was a direct response to you winning yeah which is just that's that is unreal. here's here's a fun little secret it was it was yeah <laughs> <laughs> spoiler unreal yeah um 
so how did your how did the policy change affect your plans for the upcoming year? I know you said you were talking about quitting and then you changed your mind. So what do you got got planned for the upcoming year and and how? So it's um it's kind of been a rolling rolling schedule as of as of right now because right, yeah. I am I mean I I qualified for the tour card last year. I purchased a tour card. Uh, mm -hmm. I have signed up for all of the tour events and um, I am still signed up for all the tour events. They have not removed me from those signups. So I am going to show up if they don't take me off and I'm going to play and see what happens. Mm -hmm. But if, if all else fails and they do end up removing me from those events, then I'm, I'm going to win. I'm going to just win a bunch of A tiers and see, just make, <laughs> make as many people annoyed that I'm not on tour that they have forced me to play against people that I really shouldn't be playing against in the first place because my skill level is a tour level skill. And that's, that's the reality of it. <laughs> Great. That's, I think a wonderful response. That's, that's wonderful. Um, I hope that they don't take you off. I, I kind of want to see, uh, see how big a jerks they can make themselves, you know, yeah, that is the plan. I can't really talk too much, too much about it, but that's about as much mm -hmm. as I can share. It's, yeah, it's no, going to be an interesting next few weeks, I think. So we'll see. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about it, uh, but Nova talked a lot about how her first like five years in disc golf, it was all like, it wasn't even talked about. Um, like no one, no one cared at all what she was. Um, Oh, I Did wish. You, no, you, I was going to ask if you had any similar similar feelings to that, or if it was like right from the get go, people were kind of attacking you. Um, uh, it was pretty much right from the get go, honestly. Okay. Um, that whole that whole first year, I when I I didn't really play, I didn't play events. I just uh -huh. I did field work. I tried to learn how to throw really far. I did that, and then played casually with friends when when they were available and when I was available. So. Uh, after that was done and I started to realize, hey, wait, maybe I can start playing tournaments and, and doing well at them. And once that started to happen and I, I started to show up and, and beat people that seemingly hadn't been beaten by random new players that showed up out of nowhere, um, uh -huh. people started to talk and they, they kind of Facebook stalked me a little bit and, and found some, some of my history and, and then gossiped and, and then after mm -hmm. that, okay. the, the entire community I was a part of suddenly looked at me differently and treated me yeah. differently. And that was heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. So I did, did the same thing the policy did to you, but on a smaller, smaller level, which almost is probably hurts more because it was more personal friends, you know, at that point. Yep. But yeah. yeah, I mean, the reason that the reason I'm here now, honestly, is be because that did happen from mm -hmm. that moment is uh, like i i kind of took a minute i talk i i thought about leaving back then too and then i realized right. you know what wait i can i can stick around and try and change things so that the other trans people that come after me won't have to deal with this mm -hmm. and that's that's what i did and now now i have to do it again at this elite level and teach the PHA right. lesson so <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Uh, no, like You're that's it, it's uh, yeah. that you could have just not and and just you know you saved yourself the headache. Yeah, or like been like, yeah. oh, that's somebody else's problem. But it's incredibly, uh, it shows a lot of courage. I, you know, I, I really you. just want to point that out. Um, so thank you. Uh, to all of anybody who wants to be themselves and also play disc golf. <laughs> what? <laughs> what a novel idea that is. <laughs> and like, I don't know, the way I, I, I'm, I always talk about myself, I'm sorry. But like, I, 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 this community overall has been the best and most inclusive community up until this decision. For, for From our perspective, it seemed like we were open inclusive and uh you know bring anybody onto the course who's not an asshole and um it's it, it just was a great community to make friends uh as an adult it's difficult so um yeah kind of just dif difficult to 
uh, have this be uh, a slight on that now. Yeah, I mean, from from my perspective, like the sport was very much not like that. Oh, gotcha. I, yeah. I have I have almost never seen it as an inclusive environment. It, okay. It's always said that it was, but it never really truly felt like it. It was always okay. like I would show up somewhere and oh, it, it, everyone would be talking behind my back or, or kind of shying away or refusing to even meet my gaze and, and, and things like that. And it was just is that sucks. It's it's that yeah, it's, so it's hard. It's hard to play a tournament when I feel like the majority of the people there would rather me not be there, you know? Mm -hmm. That's incredibly difficult. Oh. Fuck people. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be the person. It's my opinion. I can say things like, fuck the PDGA. <laughs> I can say that for for not not for you for, i mean just just in general you know uh so yeah definitely not for you <laughs> so what can we yeah. and our audience kind of do to help um other than just making sure that we you know like we can give give you a platform but uh, outside of that like what else, you know what else can we do to help uh the the biggest thing is probably um be as loud as possible about your disgust for this decision that they've made. Um, talk about it with people in, in, in your local groups, talk about it online, email the PDGA, tell them that this is, this is not the way forward, that this is disgusting and that they need to, they need to really reconsider their actions. Um, and the, I mean, the other best way would be to donate to my GoFundMe so that I can really show them who's who in, in court. And that will be in the show notes, uh, first thing, so. Check there if you would like to donate, please. Probably the most important uh, issue or topic that we've we've really had on the show. We're usually all about comedy and just kind of trying to spread Football. positivity. Yeah, we we just we just try and make this like a you know a little positivity for somebody's week if they're having a, having a tough week. You know, uh, but we can also do this really important serious work too that's why i love having a show so um thank you again for coming on and uh you're doing amazing by fighting back fuck the pdga <laughs> anyway um can you tell us a little bit about disc golf just a little bit is that cool can we, can we talk about switch it up talk about some disc golf uh talk to me about winning d glow it's Eric and I is probably favorite uh, tour stop, right? No, maybe? MVP. No, MVP will always oh, okay. be my favorite. But well, you can talk about that too. Yeah, you can talk about that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just we'll just talk about the why not. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, winning winning D Glow was an incredible moment um, because I up to that point hadn't really fully believed that I could. Um, but coming down the stretch and clutching up on like, oh, what was it? Hole 16 or 17, I think it was 16. Uh, and and you know, parking the hole for birdie while everyone else was struggling was, that was that moment, it didn't really hit me until after it was passed. So like on the whole, on hole 17, or, you know, a couple, five, five, 10 minutes later, I realized, oh, wait a minute, I was about to lose, wasn't I? Um, oh, got you. Yeah, yeah, and then and then I realized that I was, you know, you're about to win four, now. Four strokes, four strokes ahead, and like, yeah, it would be it would be amazing. Like, it'd be almost impossible for me to really mess it up too bad. So I I, I had the option to walk it in, which was a, a little nerve wracking to be honest, but it was mm -hmm. it was fun because I could kind of goof around on the last couple holes and you know throw that that big line drive and and show off a little bit. And Absolutely. Yeah, and then I mean, walking up the green and walking up to the green of eighteen with just the most amount of nerves I have ever had in a disc golf tournament. Um, it was it was truly incredible. So you still get nervous? <laughs> oh yeah, who doesn't? I mean, oh, if yeah. you're not cool. if you're not nervous on a course, you're not doing something right. Oh, big time! That's good. That's wonderful advice. Push yourself. <laughs> exactly. Well, okay, so yeah. So like the, the best tip that I can really give to someone that's like trying to deal with their mental game and trying to push themselves forward and, and, and that sort of thing is to let let the nerves wash over you 
feel them, but don't let them affect you as, as best you can. And then you can, you can try to direct that energy into your game rather than into your, you know, chest where you feel your heart racing or anything like that. You can try to use that energy to, to push yourself. And I, that was one of the few things this year, or I guess last year that I had, I had to learn. And the, the, I mean, the big moment that I learned it was, I think earlier in the season at OTB Open when I had had that like near historic charge on the last last round. So yeah, finally figuring out how to do that was was such a a game changer for me. Do you think that it was like a a flip switch kind of moment where you really after you won Deagle, it was like oh I can I can win any anything now like yes was that okay got you yep one hundred percent that's exactly what happened I mean I. I knew I had before it, I knew I had the skills to, to win any of them. I knew, I knew that my game was well-rounded enough to, to bring home any of them just because I had, I had every shot shape in the bag. I had, I had Anheuser's, I had Heiser's, I had flat shots, I had forehands. I mean, I I could putt relatively well. My upshots were okay. Like I had all of that you really need to, to perform at, at that sort of level. And knowing that, like, it gives you a little bit more confidence than someone who say, doesn't have that. Yeah. Big time. And you feel like you know, every time you, even if you miss a putt, you're going to make the comeback or like that, the type right. of confidence is really important. Right. Um, so was M- did MVP open feel cooler to win than D-Glow or was D-Glow cooler for you? MVP was cooler. Um, only because of the way that it, only because of the way that I won that uh-huh. one. Um, the winning in a playoff against the current world champion, like that's, yeah. that's not going to be something that I ever really do again. And uh-huh. it's going to be, it's going to be something that I, I cherish for, for a very, very long time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when you, when you go yeah, to sleep, a... just, just replay that memory. Yeah, I try. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Now that I know you did parkour, I'm kind of disappointed we get, didn't get a front flip into the pond. Ah, uh, yeah, I should have. I should have. I was told it was sort of shallow, so I wasn't supposed oh, to okay. be crazy. Oh, so, yeah, you. they wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me. That's what we'll go with. <laughs> no flips. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, my gosh. Um, so you're from Virginia, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, so what's your what's your like local courses around you like uh, or could you compare them to a course that's on tour? Um, um, they're not really comparable to any tour courses. Not really. Okay. There um, okay. there aren't really any gold level courses near near where yeah. I was staying. So, yeah. but I mean the 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 best course near where I, I'm, I lived in Richmond, Virginia. So it's pretty central okay. central Virginia. Okay. Um, so the best course near there would probably be Bryan Park. And I mean, I used to play that all day, every day. Um, one of my f- all-time favorites in the city. Um, but Richmond is in a very unique place where you could travel about an hour in any direction and you'll hit a better course. Right. <laughs> there are so oh. many courses that are just about an hour to an hour and a half away from Richmond that are just incredible. And <laughs> most of those are, are comparable to tour courses. Like the like Marshall Open was about an hour and a half away from there. Um, okay. There's a few courses in Williamsburg, Virginia, that are just some of my favorites to play. And, you know, that's that. So is it like pretty wooded golf, though? or uh, A lot of it is wooded, yeah. Okay. Um, the the course I mentioned earlier, Bryan Park, that's like the only open course within like 100 miles of Richmond. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's very park style, you know, a couple trees in the fairway, wide open, mm-hmm. just kind of rip it as far as you want and uh yeah. yeah so that's where you learn how to bomb yep that's it that's the one <laughs> i learned in the soccer fields over behind it and then i took it to the course right after it so yeah that's awesome and then uh you stuck with what the neptune right again for the year yes neptune. correct yeah, okay. yeah i signed a five-year deal with them um oh, this uh congrats. this january congratulations on that no, it's thank a, you about thank a month you. old but still that's that's great um, and then uh, what is their like flagship disc offhand? I can't. Uh, it's the squid. It's a, a yeah, driver. Yeah. Very, very similar to a wraith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Kind, of, kind of understable. <laughs> yep. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. The, the funny news about that is the very first time I ever got my hands on a production run um, that was technically legal to, to throw yeah. was the week, the week of Deep Will. 
and oh, I oh. I put it in my bag for that event, and I threw it about six holes every day, and then I won the tournament with it. Oh, oh right. that's awesome! So I'm, you know, that's it. Might it might be the secret? You know, who knows? Yeah, yeah new plastic <laughs> makes you throw good. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Just the squid, though. All the other stuff. Yeah, right. all the others. They aren't as good, though. You got to get the squid. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. No octopuses here. <laughs> do you have a favorite course on tour uh favorite one's probably toboggan at at Diglo. that okay. that course is the elevation there is just so fun to throw off of and up and, and all that and it's 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 so like on camera you can't even really you can't even really fathom how far down and up it it really is like it's it, what you see on on Jomez and all that is half of what it feels like in person. It's it's that drastic. I think when you see like the people who take like selfies while they're there, and you can see like how far, like you know, when the crowd's walking up the hill at two or whatever, that's when yeah. you can really tell like how how steep that is. I mean, it's, I mean, it's easily still not like ideally, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, it's easily like two hundred fifty to three hundred feet, like up, just yeah, a cliff. So it's insane how much hiking that course is but there's nothing more fun than walking up to hole one and throwing off of a mountain more or less mm -hmm. right yeah yeah not, not a ton of opportunities to throw off mountains typically yeah so yeah it's just so fun unless you live in colorado yeah that unless you're there you never know <laughs> yeah i am here too i i live in parker so it's amazing oh <laughs> 45 minutes out of like Bailey. It's one of the best. Yeah. Um, yep. 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 Um, yep. But anyway, <laughs> uh, just to touch back on a little bit of the discrimination stuff. Again, Eric and I both cisgendered white males. So it's, we don't, we don't experience discrimination on it on any kind of real basis. So, uh, mm -hmm. I guess like my question would be, or it's not quite a question. Nova really was saying like, this isn't the first, her first rodeo with this discrimination or like the, it, it's just something that is on a daily basis. Um, so this isn't the, I mean, even if like policy, all, all that junk, this isn't, a huge thing you're still going to be a person you're still going to be um living your life if it, i would say actually i just thought of an even better question what's one like one thing that you're bad at one thing i'm bad at yeah um <laughs> one thing i'm bad at sorry that was a left turn yeah a little bit um <laughs> <laughs> uh i am i am bad at driving oh <laughs> i'm not a good driver i am not not great um but other than that <laughs> the first okay. thing, the first thing that comes to mind is i am i'm just yeah i'm not not the best but other than that like um if we were to talk about disc golf specifically i don't i don't really have a good backhand up shot okay okay that's the one thing that i've i've worked really hard on this off season to to definitely fix my form with because i i tried to just throw like slow standstills but that doesn't really that doesn't really work when you're throwing at like 10 percent effort because it's so hard to control going that slowly so i uh i, I kind of found a, a friend of mine who's also sponsored by neptune we we got together and he he showed me how he throws up shots and and kind of did it did it that way so it, i changed my form a little bit figured out how to do it and and now practiced it in a field for you know the last two months straight so that i can you know do it perfectly again and it's it's helped quite a bit but i still feel like it's my weak point so what uh what kind of range like are you talking like 200 to 100 or 100 yep right about in there that would be it okay, gotcha. yeah like 250 to 100 feet somewhere in there gotcha. uh -huh. Yeah. Typically, I'll I'll throw a, like a little flick approach rather than using a backhand. But there are times yeah. when they can, you just can't do that, and uh -huh. those those were where I lost a lot of my strokes. Yeah. So you're going to be even better this year. Yep. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I learned how to throw lefty, so I don't have to use a forehand. Ooh. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's not quite as good as I want it to be, but I can, I can hit like three, 350, 375 distance wise wow. on, on like big flex lines. And I need to get the touch a little bit better, but it's, it's, it's coming along nicely. Uh-huh. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Eric Jinx. You hold me a soda. <laughs> Uh, that's that's amazing. Uh, how how long did it take you to kind of figure out the lefty uh, route? Like, um, I had always wanted to. So when I was brand new, I was forehand dominant. I threw almost entirely forehand. I would I would try to throw X steps and and just miserably fail and have to really really work at it. But when I was trying to learn that X step, I was like, oh, I'll just learn lefty forehand and lefty and righty forehand, and I'll just throw only forehands. It'll be fine. So my, my gut reaction was always to kind of do that. And uh-huh. now, now that I'm realizing that forehands are much, much more dangerous for the body than throwing backhands, I am kind of shying away from them. Now that I've learned how righty form is supposed to feel at, you know, a peak, peak level for my particular body type, uh, I know how I know how to try to do that with my left side too. It's just going to be throwing thousands and thousands of shots in a field until I can get that that same touch that I used to that I still have with my right hand. And the other big reason uh, okay, I learned it, the, yeah, the other big reason I learned it was so that I wouldn't just use one arm. I want to kind of balance the amount of effort I put into my body so that I don't get as many overuse injuries as I had last year. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. You're very smart. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's why I'm here, honestly. I've, yeah. uh, I've strategically done so many things to, to get myself into a position to, to be as successful as I have been. And I, there, are, there are quite a number of people out there that don't so absolutely and that's it's going to put you head and shoulders above those people um so yeah no that's awesome um typically do you like listen to music when you're uh practicing do you uh podcast or is it just do you just go quiet um it's it depends on how i'm feeling usually i'll listen to music uh just toss on like a spotify radio or something and see where it takes me but no uh, there are there are times when i want it to be quiet so that i can kind of feel the wind on my ears and stuff like that so that i can i can get a, a better feeling because i don't listen to music when i play tournaments right. um yeah i just i i will occasionally but it's very rare um depends on who's on the card really but mm-hmm. yeah so not that you don't have to name any names but the pros that you're with on tour have some of them made it obviously that they support you or is it mostly fallen on like they haven't even reached out. I mean, the people who are uh, for the policy have made it pretty obvious on, on most Instagrams on most of their Instagrams, but the people who support you, have they reached out? Uh, A few of them have. Yeah. Um, But I, a lot of them have not. Um, And I think the large reason for that is a lot of the sponsors aren't mm-hmm. letting people be publicly vocal about about the yeah. how how their players feel about things um mm-hmm. and that's a real shame in my opinion because it yeah. could it could potentially help a lot of people who are being hurt right now and right. the sponsors are actively silencing a lot of people and and that's honestly kind of a kind of a, a bit of a almost a bigger crime yeah definitely oh yeah, they just probably don't want co- controversy right. around their brand or whatever. Right. That's a lot of it, I think. But they could, they could yep. just help. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> could. They could just silencing do silencing people. Like, uh, but I mean, a lot of. I mean, when you really think about it, though, a lot of a lot of the sponsors, like owners, are you know old cis white men. So yes. like. They fit in that demographic that is entirely okay with what's going on right now. And that's a real shame. Mm-hmm. They want wait. their money. Right. I can't wait until the younger generation takes over all, all these <laughs> fucking old guys. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Right there with you. Uh, Eric, uh, do you have the thing up to like 
uh, it, when, when is the uh, PDG election stuff? Can can we talk about that real quick? I think if you vote on the board of directors in July, so I have up. I think that that's one of the more important things that I took away from like our conversation with Nova is it's it's a boring thing, but it's uh, important. So to go vote. Um, so I just wanted to mention that on here too. Um, it was a really close decision for this policy. So it could have been, um, you know, could have voted a different direction. So. Um, well, the other the other big notable part about that is two of the people that voted for this policy are up for re-election. So if if people want change, they can vote for it and it will happen. Uh -huh. So. So please. Do you know please which vote. ones are up? <laughs> Go vote. vote. You know which ones are up for re-election or up for election? Um, I know I know Nate Heinold is. I can't remember the other one. Okay. We have Jeff, Wilbur, David, and Nate are the ones that voted to ban. So I don't know. If yeah. That, so Nate and one of the other ones. Gotcha. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. We'll find that out in July. So yeah. Yep. We're gonna we're we're gonna do a a little a little thing. So we're gonna try and uh, make it uh, make it a little bit bigger. You know? Yeah. Why not? I think a lot of people are trying to do that right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> I just I sure I, hope so. Anyway. I hate that people hide behind silence and just think that that's an appropriate okay. response. Yeah. yeah. Like exactly. Um, there was a lot of silence when the nazis were taking over like fuck that noise like come on guys yep. you have to do something yeah say something anything at all would be great i don't even care if you're gonna speak up against me speak up at all make your voice known like i don't i i don't want to play these games like let's be honest with each other and talk about it please absolutely and i feel like a lot of people through conversation they come to the correct conclusions they don't Right. A lot of most people don't want to be on the Nazi side or the <laughs> right. you know racial discrimination side or you know that you don't look good in twenty years. Uh, it and that not that you should only do things because of how you are perceived by society, but you should do things based on your actual like morals. But um, you know, it's just it's difficult. <laughs> yes. Eric, what else you got? Uh, that's all the questions we wrote down. I was hoping you were going to go off script more. I, I mean, <laughs> been on script a lot. Uh, do you? What's have your favorite trip? snack? That's what well, I, was I love. Oh, my favorite snack. Um, okay. Usually, I'll get like a bag of grapes, and oh. I will, I will snack on grapes whenever I'm hungry. Like every, every like three, four holes, I'll just have like five, and then I'll just. Now I want grapes. Me too. Grapes are so good. They Anything with so sugar good. in it. Anything with sugar in it is like perfect for for like an activity where you're just like basically hiking. So you uh -huh. want something with with high high energy content so you can just get it into your into your blood quicker, let you yeah. keep going. Um, and then afterwards you you know drink protein or or whatever to build. But yeah. Uh -huh. I like the amount of water that's in grapes too. Yeah, like... yeah. They they're just like they're just so nice. So yeah. yeah. They're just perfect. You ever freeze them? Oh yeah, frozen grapes are the best. Okay. Oh god, cool. it's been a long time since I've done it, but yeah, I used to do it all the time. If it's real hot out, I'll do it every once yeah. in a while. Yeah, because then you can just like you just suck on them, and they're just right. like cold, and it's great. It's, it's yeah, so perfect. Yeah. It's like a little icy. Yeah, it do is. Do you prefer like, white yeah. or red one? Uh, like yeah, red red grapes for sure. Red grapes, okay. Red grapes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I thought of a wonderful question: ice baths or saunas? <laughs> Um, I would, I would more often probably do an ice bath than a yeah. sauna. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. an important question because I'm a very big sauna person. Eric's more of a, uh, a ice bath guy. Make so. myself cold. Yeah. yeah. I mean, occasionally like when I'm on tour, cause there isn't really, there isn't really the ability to do it while you're touring when you're living in a van, yeah. like, like I do. So mm -hmm. we would, I mean, I'd go to a like planet fitness, you know, shower there and then at the very end of the shower for like five minutes to ten minutes just turn it to cold <laughs> just yeah. get it as ice cold as i possibly can through that and oh some of those days are just the best when it's like 99 outside 
So when, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so when we get a uh, Natalie Ryan's bag, like a, a sponsor, a Natalie Ryan, like disc golf bag, will it be a, a specified grape pocket? Ooh. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, it'll have a little tiny grape icon on it with a little flap, and then there's just grapes in there, and then that's it. It's, it's going to be in a perfectly convenient spot, so you don't even have to take it off to eat them. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so we always got to ask this for the show, but what is your biggest oh no moment on the disc golf course? The biggest, most memorable one for me has to be during OTB Open last year um when i was you know la round three i started 10 strokes back a page i made up all 10 of those strokes in 16 holes and then on hole 17 i threw a, a bad drive kind of was in the fairway still but like pretty far out page threw yeah. a better drive and then i had to play aggressive and I came up short on an island like Peninsula Green, was like a foot out of bounds and just oh, died on the inside. Oh, oh God, man. that was heartbreaking because I knew, I knew I had a chance to win right then. And I just like, choked a little bit and that one hurt, that one hurt. I can't remember one of the pros has said it, but uh, the fact that you gave yourself the chance to choke is like a whole win in itself like you know you didn't win yeah. but but you put yourself at the chance to win and that's like yeah it should be seen as like a win itself i can't remember yeah. who said that but yeah kind of changed the way i looked at some of the some of my bad things but yeah that, that one hurts that one would hurt a lot even no matter what yeah. no matter how how much of a silver lining you try to find on it find in it it'll yeah hurt. yeah how does um playing with the best in the world kind of change your perspective on the game itself. Do you, do you feel a little bit of pressure when um, like when you're off season, like now you're working on all of these things, do, does it feel less pressure, more pressure? How, how do you feel within like that group? Um, honestly, I very much enjoyed playing with the best in the world. Um, it, it's that, I'm that kind of person that kind of thrives on that kind of pressure, that, that feeling that that my competitors are there fighting for the top just like I am. It, it drives me to play better and push yourself. Yeah, it's it's easier to push yourself when you have those players that you know aren't going to mess up, that you you know are going to make that big thirty footer. Like you kind of try a little bit more, and I don't know. There's there's just something so much more enjoyable and so much more i guess challenging to to play with those players absolutely yeah you, yeah and uh, you fit right in so <laughs> yeah you're number nine right i think yeah yeah okay. last year was number nine on the i think uh u.s tour rank i think was what it was okay it's incredible yeah um so I guess, what would you say to any um, trans players that are dealing with the same same issues that you dealt with growing up in, in disc golf uh, on their local scene? Like how, any, any words of support for them or advice? Um, the best advice I would give them is to don't, don't, uh, I guess, walk away from it, is to, mm -hmm. to, to stick, stick around, you know, like people change, people do, they learn, they get better, they they understand who you are by getting to know you and putting yourself out there and, and being able to kind of, I, I guess, just get to know people in your local community can can do a lot. Um, that would be my my best sort of advice to people out there. Like, of course, if you live in a place where like it's really not safe for you to go out like maybe you yeah. should just move but like right. but, <laughs> yeah i know that's yeah. not entirely reasonable for a lot of people but uh -huh, you know yeah. stay safe out there absolutely yeah. oh it's ridiculous <laughs> yeah um oh that was a good question eric thank you um, i think i learned to say it too about interviewing yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, um yeah. No. Is no. there anything that we missed that you want to talk about? Like, is that we completely dropped the ball on too that we've never that we haven't brought up? 
Um, no, I don't think so. We've kind of covered the broad, a lot of broad strokes. So, mm-hmm. um, thank you for being a wonderful role model for the community and just being yourself all the time and just kicking ass. So thank you for being you. You're very much welcome. Though I feel like I could do a bit better, but you know, that's just the perfectionist in me. <laughs> well, and you got to take care of yourself. You can't just constantly be be fighting, fighting all the time. And right. Yeah. Don't forget. Wait, to who, wait who says, who says that? <laughs> <laughs> not healthy right right. like i'll fight you (laughs) yeah yeah, get down here (laughs) um before we forget do you want to just let every know everyone know where they can follow you and uh do you have a we'll get the link in the show notes for the gofundme but if there's another easier place for them to find it as well uh yeah Uh, so you can you can follow me on facebook and instagram at at natalie ryan one one four five six zero um that's my usual handle i think i have a twitter but i don't really use it but if you want to follow me on there too why not go for it um but yeah the gofundme link is also in my my instagram bio so if you want to you know head there to to find it you can do so Uh, yeah nova told us that every once in a while she likes to go to twitter and just see who's talking about her and see how many (laughs) how many people's heads she lives in rent free (laughs) yeah there's probably too many of those yeah yeah that's ridiculous the yeah, level that not, people go to she was talking about great. how people had like one person had like multiple accounts and like yep yeah i've had to deal with similar things yeah i mean i as much as i shouldn't i read all the messages i get for the most part i'll at least read them uh a lot of them i don't really respond to just because i am shy so i don't, I don't really like to talk to people too much uh but you know, I'll at least look at them, and, and I see a lot of the, lot of the same stuff from a lot of the same people, and it's it's a real shame. But it is. I, it doesn't really. the The crazy part is, it doesn't. The, it, that sort of stuff, like the the vocal hatred and, and all that, it doesn't bother me. Um, like I think a lot of people, it, it probably does bother, but um, I don't, I don't really get bothered by that. It, it kind of fuels me a little bit. Um, but like I the thing that. that really, thing that really sets me off is like their actions like this policy like how they've treated people how they've treated me in the past i've been i've been booed off of a course before and like i'm sorry that's not okay it isn't but that's like that sort of stuff that's what tears me down but like yeah just calling me a jerk or calling me calling me a man or whatever you want to do online like that's do it, do it, go for it. I don't care. Yeah, right. You know, it doesn't. Haters doesn't fuel change the flame. Anything. Yeah, it doesn't change anything. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I think, kind of like you said too, it's at least you know, like where what side they're on. You know, like uh, right, right. Not, not, yeah. Now, now you you know, like now that you now that you live to please people, but once you figure out that someone isn't, you know, hate you or or is mad at you or whatever, you can you can kind of dismiss miss anything else they have to say about you right yeah i mean i i won't i won't entirely write them off either like like those people's opinions they they might be crap but like they're still Mm -hmm. they're still that like that person still believes that like you you can't just entirely write off who they are just because of Mm -hmm. something they think like they might also be a very nice person it's just they have this very strong opinion about who i am and why i'm playing and what i'm doing with my life and Mm -hmm most of those opinions are wrong, but like that doesn't inherently make them a bad person. And that, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's a very, very hard struggle to try and connect with those people in any real way. But <laughs> when you do, it really, it really helps quite a lot. Goes back to oh, yeah. one, uh, two things. You want to treat people the way you'd like to be treated. And you learn that right. when you're like a toddler. Um, i don't know how people forget that it's like a (laughs) no one really grows up that's why it's just um i lost i lost a second point but uh but yeah no it's it's playground bullshit arguments so um also like middle school bully type feel of arguments it's just like 
Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think uh, another thing that I really took from Nova's interview, standing up to those in those situations is incredibly important. Um, yes. And it's just insane that you have to, um, in my opinion. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you there. Like, yeah. the, the, those moments are pivotal for kind of pushing pushing I mean equality forward more or less and I mean that's going to be one of those like Las Vegas is going to be one of those moments where if they if they don't take me off the list I'm going to show up and I'm going to make them drag me off the course and that's uh I'm terrified to go you know like I, knowing I that it's probably going to cause a scene is scary it's all yeah and, anxiety inducing yeah yeah Still know, do that, it though. know that there are people that support you um and you know hopefully uh by doing things like this it, it really can dispel uh whatever it is in people's head that makes you out to be a monster um and and turn you more of an in, into a person hopefully um that's the goal yeah but really appreciate you uh doing this and no no continuing thank, thank to be you a for it's thank just... you for having me honestly like it has been incredible to to have so many people reach out to me to try and get my voice out there and and, and help in in any real way so you you guys are the real heroes no <laughs> no no <laughs> no you are but uh <laughs> but thank you uh we try try to make sure that we're um it's a big thing for me. I'm horribly depressed and anxiety and all that stuff. So like any day that I can um, try and uh, put out some positivity into the world is a, is a good day. So um, I really feel like uh, we, we try and live by that. So, but um, that's, I, I, I mean, I don't have anything else. I was just like, I, I, I get so excited. I, I <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just amazing to have you on. Thank you. Thanks again, Eric. Do you have anything? I don't. Uh, just it was awesome meeting you. Um, hope maybe, hopefully, if you're you make it to Deco, I you know I keep telling myself I'm gonna go every year. So the past I'm two years, he said he's gonna go. And a half away. <laughs> yeah, and I just, just I never make it. So it's a great one to go watch, from what I hear. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. I gotta get lots of pictures from all my friends who go, and I'm just like, ah, I just don't, I don't have the time to do it. So yeah, but yeah, it was, uh, yeah, like I said, it was great meeting you, well, virtually meeting you. Um, we wish you the best of luck with everything, and yeah, hopefully um, this year goes amazing for you, and hopefully, yeah. um, you know, the Las Vegas challenge will just be uh, easy. I, I, and hopefully it doesn't turn into a huge thing. Let's let's just hope it, it goes good. Maybe it'll go good. Yeah, I mean, there's there's hoping, but like, I'm not going to fight for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Low expectations. Yeah, yeah hope exactly. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Yep, that's how I've always lived my life. So yeah, it's been a real pleasure meeting both of you as well. Thank you both for having me on. Yeah, thank you. And thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Catch you on the flip side.